Human beings have used signatures, marks to define themselves as individuals, for centuries. In this research study, using mobile phone data, we've defined the concept of social signatures, which allow us to see how people relate to those around them and how they structure their social world. We wanted to understand this idea of a social signature by analyzing the phone call patterns of a group of young people moving from school to work or university. We thought this was interesting because it's a time of life when people's social lives are in flux. New friendships may form, existing friendships may be dropped or may taper off. We wanted to see how their social ties changed over 18 months by looking at the number of calls they made or the total call duration and how close they told us they were to the people they were talking with. So we were interested in questions like, will the social ties remain or will they change? Would there be a pattern that would remain even if the social ties would change? Or would they just simply evolve in all directions? When we started the study, we began by discussing with our colleague Robin Dunbar, who is at the University of Oxford as well, and we wanted to develop this idea of social signatures in relation to his work on the social brain hypothesis. Robin's theory is that our brain evolution is driven by the need to manage social groups. And he suggests that the optimum number of interrelationships is limited in humans to just 150 people. The other interesting feature of Robin's theory is that the social world that surrounds us, that is 150 or so people we have relationships with, is highly structured. So you may have three extremely close friends, five good friends, eight friends you see from time to time, and so on. Overall, the number of close friends is quite limited, whereas we have greater capacity to sustain weaker ties. So we could think of our social world as a layered structure representing friendships and family ties of different strengths. We wanted to explore to what extent the social signature shows that this hypothesis actually applies. If you accept Robin's thesis, it follows that even if you have an infinite amount of time and emotional capital, you nevertheless would find that your social world is limited because our brains have simply evolved to cope with a certain amount of social interaction. What was really interesting for us was whether in the modern world this changes the picture now that we have a plethora of modern communication technologies available to us. Up to now, most studies have taken a couple of different approaches. The one is to use survey-based methods, which can collect detailed information on small groups of individuals. There's a problem with that, however, which is that people find it difficult to remember what they've done in the past, and that can often falsify the results. At the other extreme, in the era of big data, we can look at the phone calls between millions of different people. But we face a different challenge there, because we really don't know who these people are, what the relationships between them are. The beauty of what we did is that we draw on both of these methods, and so we can rely on both of their strengths and balances their weaknesses out against each other. Once we put together the ingredients of our data and what we really want to test, then we begin to look for ways of measuring the social signature. So these are two participants in the study uh, looked at in consecutive six-month periods. And what you can see here is that the person at the top, they have a lot of attention placed on their top contact and maybe second top contact. But that is very different than the second individual for whom the top contacts, although they are receiving more, more uh, phone calls, the time is more evenly spread. Here you see big gaps, here you don't see those big gaps. So what we see here is that the pattern remains roughly the same over time, even though the individuals that are being contacted are changing. And that really is what we refer to as a social signature. It's really interesting to us as scientists, but I think there are actually practical consequences for the designers of social networks, for people involved in marketing, even for those involved with the treatment of mental health. Imagine, for instance, that you see a sudden change in somebody's social signature. That might give us an indication that they're feeling vulnerable or that some form of intervention is necessary. The question is, when we look at the behaviours that we display when using new technologies, smartphones, apps, online social networks, 
how do they gel with what we know about ourselves as social animals that are the outcome of biological evolution? So it might be that in spite of all this technology that we have available to us, actually we're still prisoners of our own biology. Our hardware just hasn't caught up.